Hey, I'm Matt. Today I want to show you how to make this beautifully simple picture frame. I actually used maple and walnut to make this out of. I'm very happy with how it turned out. Let me show you how I did it. This video is brought to you by 731woodworks.com. Go check our store out. We have easy to follow build plans as well as products and merchandise for you to check out. That directly supports us and helps us make videos like this. This is a perfect scrap wood project. I've got four pieces of walnut that were left over from a previous project as well as a piece of maple that was left over. So I started by using my planer to plane everything to the same thickness. And then I lost a hose and dust went everywhere. Be sure to check the description. I have the links down there for you for all the tools and supplies used in this build. Once they were the same thickness, I jointed one edge. That way I have a good flat edge so I can glue the walnut and maple together. See those straight edges? It's gonna come out nice. Then I took the piece of maple over and I ripped half inch strips on the table saw. I got four of those. And then you'll notice there's a little bit of burning there with a the saw blade burn. So I just run those back through the planer and got that off. Next, we got the glue up. Get some clamps, that one of a kind glue spreader, put everything together, clamp it up, let it dry for a few hours. I did use calls here to keep everything as flat as possible. Hey, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, hit the bell icon so you get notified of all the new content we've got coming. Once the clamps come off, I noticed that it was still not perfectly flat and I wanted to take care of that. You see right there, there's a little lip. So I run them back through the planer to get them flat again. Then I took my Craig setup block, so I used a quarter inch one to set the blade a quarter inch high. And then I moved the fence over one quarter inch away from the blade. We'll cut a groove in the maple side of this frame. And if you notice my feather board's too close, it was really difficult to push that through. So I'd actually adjust that back so that it wasn't putting too much pressure on there. Once that was done, I cut a groove in all four pieces. Then I turn the pieces up on edge and run it back through the table saw, the same setup, quarter inch, quarter inch. And that way I could cut a piece off and we'll make a rabbit so that the glass and the picture can sit down in the frame. Then I set the table saw fence at an inch and a half and I ripped everything to an inch and a half wide. That's how wide my frame's gonna be. Don't forget to follow us on Instagram, 731 works, post a lot of content there. Next, we come over to the miter saw and I set it to 45 degrees. I cut two test cuts and then put those together and check with the square to make sure that it was gonna be a good square cut. Once that's done, I just cut real slow through this stuff because I don't wanna splinter or break anything. Check it again. I took This is how I actually measured for the glass. This picture frame glass comes out of a very cheap one from Walmart, like $1.50 for the frame. I just took the glass out of it. Then I just cut the frame to fit that glass. That way I didn't have to do any crazy measuring and figuring out what angles had to be where. Marked it and cut it, and then I just kept cutting until it fit perfect. This is the dial max. I put in the quarter inch drill guides here. That's gonna help because these are so small. I'm just gonna put two dials per joint. If you haven't seen me talk about this before, it's, a, and it's an extremely good jig if for dialing all kinds of stuff. I've actually, this workbench was dialed together with the dial max, three eighths inch dials. Go check it out. I'll put a link in the description. Just want to make sure everything's flat down there and everything is snug here. I'm just drilling the top two, not the bottom one. That is for when we drill the other side, when we bring it this way. How I figured out the depth is these are inch and a half long. And so I want my drill depth to be three quarters of an inch. So Dialmax has this set and it's actually set at three quarters of an inch. If you can see that mark in there. So basically you just put the drill bit inside and set the drill collar. So you want to keep the face on the same side on all of them.
before I glue it up, I'm actually going to test fit it, uh, make sure that everything goes together like it's supposed to. I'm going to go ahead and stick these dowels in there. What, 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 what? First picture frame. It fit. Woo, look at that. That's all dialed in. Man, all I gotta do is, is sand this and clean it up. Woo, and then we're gonna glue it together. That makes me happy. You gotta get you one of them dial maxes, man. It makes everything so easy. Mm. So I took a chisel into that groove that the table saw cut, and you see that the teeth are alternate beveled so that it doesn't leave a flat cut. And I just used a chisel to clean that up. It was very little to actually clean up, but I want it to be flat so that the glass sit flat. Once that was done, it was time to sand. And I actually just sanded to 120 grit for now. Time for the glue up. I just use a liberal amount of glue on each of the dials and then also on the joints. And then I just cleaned up any extra glue that I had there. I use this band clamp. It's an Irwin band clamp. I think I picked it up at Lowe's. It worked all right. So you saw the tight miters, but later you're gonna see where they open up a little bit. And I actually went back and put these parallel clamps on. I should have left those on longer. I actually unclamped it too soon. I only left it clamped about an hour and it should have left it three or four hours. I think that's why it separated a little bit in the corners. This is a CMT 1 8 inch roundover bit. I use that on the outer edge just to kind of break that edge over. Then I sanded it to 220 grit. Then I took a 400 grit sanding block and sanded the whole thing. Then I used walrus oil to finish the frame with. It's all right, I prefer Odie's. I let it sit on there for a little while and then buffed it clean. I actually just used a staple gun to put in a few staples into the side of the groove so that I could have something to hold the picture and the backboard in place. I actually missed one of them as you saw there. Then I just put this hanging hardware on in the center. So I actually looked high and low on YouTube to find a simple picture frame that didn't require spline jigs or any type of crazy joinery going on or one that wasn't just glued together. I wanted it to be strong and last a very long time, but as well be beautiful and so I couldn't find what I was looking for, so I decided just to make my own video on how to do this. And as usual, I just kind of winged it and figured it out as I went. Beautiful, simple picture frame for the employee of the month. I'm just joking around with this, but as you can see, this thing turned out really nice. Like a, it's a beautiful picture frame, maple and walnut. Uh, it's just, it turned out awesome. I'm really happy with how this turned out for my first time ever making a picture frame. It is not perfect and I am not perfect. And to this date, I've yet to create anything perfect and I'm okay with that. The miters didn't come out exactly right. And I think it was due to my clamping. Everything fit together in pre-assembly. I think that the, the way that band clamp was working, it put a lot of pressure right here and it actually dented a little bit. I saw that it was starting to dent the wood so I, I didn't clamp down on it real hard and I should have taken some other clamps or gotten some type of other different type of clamp. But for the most part, it, it comes out extremely close and it'll last for years and years with it being dialed in like that. And hey, I finally made employee of the month. I've got 10 scrap wood project ideas for you right there. Click that box, earned you that big old virtual fist bump. Also another one of my favorite videos, click right there. Thank you for watching.